Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror thriller film, Stare. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with two young women having lunch together at a restaurant. Mizuki is listening to her friend Kana's story about a recent wedding, where the guests were photographed in the middle of clapping for the bride and groom. The photo caught their hands strangely frozen, in the Japanese act of holding their hands together like in a funeral. It was eerily ominous, and shortly after, the newlyweds died in an accident. When she finishes her story, Kana gets up from their table to look at the window, transfixes at something in the distance. She presses her hand on the window with a scared look on her face. That night, a young man, named Haruo, receives a call from his little brother, just as he is stepping out of a convenience store. His brother seems distressed and cryptically asks Haruo how long he had hated him. He is cowering in a corner of his room, staring at the dark. The last thing Haruo hears is the brother telling someone else to stay away from him. Worried, Haruo rushes to his brother's apartment, but he's too late. His brother is lying dead on the floor with his eyes just two bloody sockets. The autopsy indicates that he died of heart failure, and it causes eyeballs to burst. Haruo is still in shock. The detective determines that there is no foul play involved, but Haruo insists that there was someone else in the room when his brother died. Haruo walks out of the autopsy room and sees Mizuki sitting at the hospital cafeteria one floor below. He approaches her and introduces himself, telling her that his brother was her friend's co-worker. The strange thing is that both his brother and her friend died of the same causes within three days. Mizuki recounts that Kana suddenly got scared in the restaurant and dropped to the floor. She kept screaming about someone being there, but there was no one else. Kana was so terrified at that time that she left bloody marks on Mizuki's hand. Then she gave one terrifying scream, and her eyeballs burst, showering Mizuki with blood. After their talk, Mizuki and Haruo decide to investigate the weird circumstances surrounding their loved one's death. They start by interviewing their co-workers to figure out what happened. The first visit is to Aiko, who also believes that her co-worker's deaths were not accidents. She says that the woman with the big eye must have come for them. A flashback reveals that the brother, Kana, and Aiko all went on a trip and stayed at a hotel together. They hung out in the hotel lobby, and Kana told them the same wedding horror story. An employee named Arki approached the group and offered to tell them a horror story. Intrigued, the hotel concierge also joined their group to listen. Arki's tale began with a man walking down a mountain one night. He encountered a creepy woman with big eyes and a bell hanging from her clasped hands. She kept following him, and he confronted her about it. The woman said that the man knows about her, and he denies this. She then mentions a name and exclaims that she will kill whoever knows her name. The irritated man tells the woman to go bother other people who also know her name. The flashback ends, and Aiko begins to narrate the story to Mizuki and Haruo, telling them that the woman turned around and pointed. Demonstrating how the woman in the story did it, Aiko points at Mizuki and tells her that she is the next. Aiko then goes to the kitchen to prepare some tea. After minutes pass and the kettle has already boiled, Haruo walks through the apartment to look for Aiko. However, he finds her in her bedroom, hanging from the ceiling. He quickly unties her and calls for Mizuki. While Haruo goes to the telephone to call for help, Mizuki stays with the unconscious Aiko. The woman softly whispers that someone named Shillardy's son is coming. Arki had told them at the hotel that whoever knows the name and story will be cursed. Right on cue, the lights overhead flickered. Aiko wakes up at the hospital and apologizes to Mizuki and Haruo for involving them in the curse. According to the legend, the moment they both heard Shillardy's son's name, their souls belonged to her. That night, the hotel concierge walks home on a dimly lit road. He recently discovered that the guests he listened to the Shillery Sun story with had started dying one by one, and he is intent on looking up their social media accounts to know more. He is looking at his phone, but he senses that someone is behind him. He turns around and sees a woman cloaked in darkness. Remembering the story of Shillery Sun, he quickly starts running, but it's no use. The woman catches up to him. Her face isn't shown, but she is wearing a kimono, and her hands are clasped in front of her, like the funeral gesture that Kana spoke about. The concierge screams in horror. Meanwhile, Mizuki is writing in her notebook alone, when she suddenly feels the presence of her friend Kana. It only lasts a brief moment, but she could almost see her friend sitting next to her. Elsewhere, a reporter informs his wife about the strange string of recent deaths involving burst eyeballs. The couple had recently lost their daughter to a car accident, and they are both still struggling with her death. The reporter is eager to work on a new reporting assignment, so he could be distracted. He takes on this case and plans to go to the hotel himself to know more. Soon after, Aiko pens a letter for Mizuki and Haruo. 
She apologizes again for getting them cursed, and explains that she felt trapped and alone, and she wanted to have someone with her to face the curse. She also adds that they should find Arki, since he was the one who initially told them the story. Later that day, Mizuki accidentally burns the dinner she is cooking on the stove, and hurriedly turns it off. Amid the smoke, she sees another vision of Kana, wearing the same clothes she died in, and her eyes sockets all bloody. Just like earlier, she disappears. Unmer of Mizuki calls Harduo, and invites him to have dinner. Arduo accepts the invitation, and Mizuki tells him about the visions she's been having. But he has a more positive view on this, thinking that Kana must be watching over Mizuki and keeping her safe. The two enjoy the dinner together, and Mizuki begins to feel safer with Haruo around. Aiko mails her letter, and returns to the hospital. She steps off the elevator on the floor where her room is, and walks down the hallway. Suddenly, the lights turn off, and she glimpses a woman stalking toward her. A nurse comes up behind her, and tells her it is now time to go back to her room, so she can rest. Aiko frantically says that there is someone at the end of the hallway, but the nurse doesn't see anyone there. Aiko runs and hides from shiloh son, but it's no use. The nurse eventually finds her body sprawled on the hospital floor, with her eyeballs ruptured like the previous victims. At the same time, Haruo dreams of his brother appearing to him. He accuses Haruo of hating him, because he was the cause of their mother's death due to childbirth. Before they can talk more, Haruo wakes up. Haruo and Mizuki receive Aiko's letter, and they go to the hotel to look for Arki. They meet the reporter, who had come to the hotel for the same reason. The reporter asks the manager about the group who visited the hotel, and she shares that her former concierge was also interested in their deaths. The reporter gets the concierge's address, and goes there in hopes of talking to him. But the former concierge was traumatized by his encounter with Shilleri's son, and had a nervous breakdown. Meanwhile, Mizuki and Haruo visit Arki's boss, who tells them that he had died due to heart failure just like the others. The police had found a diary at the crime scene, and the boss also reveals that before he died, Arki told him that he had recently found his elementary school diary, and remembered that he had written the story there, after he heard it from an old retired teacher of his. The reporter spends time with the concierge, and learns more about the curse. The reason why he survived was that he stared at Shillardy's son. It's said that as long as you're staring at her, she won't be able to come closer. After talking with the concierge, the reporter goes back to his room. He lies down for a bit, then suddenly sees a woman wearing a kimono in the corner of his room. A moment later, she is gone. Disturbed by what he saw, he goes down to the lobby, and waits for Haruo. He then tells him about the concierge's story. Mizuki is walking down a dark street that night. Shillery's son comes for her, and she freaks out. The woman with big eyes is a fearsome sight to behold. She has a long, gaunt face, with sharp cheekbones, and large and dark fathomless eyes that seem to glint in the dark. Red blood is smeared across her unmoving mouth. Shillery's son stalks closer and closer to her. Mizuki calls Haruo for help, who tells her that she has to keep staring at Shilleri's son for a long time, so she won't be able to get to her. Although she is scared, Mizuki does what he tells her, while Haruo races to the street where Mizuki is, and bravely stands beside her. They both keep their eyes glued on Shilleri's son, and retreat several paces from her. Right then, Kana's ghost appears next to Mizuki while she is crying, and she apologizes to her friend for not holding her hand during her last moments. This time, she holds Kana's hand, and gets the strength to make it through the ordeal alive. Eventually, Haruo and Mizuki decide to go past where Shilleri's son is frozen, and get out of there. She follows them with her eyes as they slowly move, and when Mizuki locks gazes with her, she is suddenly transported to another time. Mizuki is now in a dark cavern, and inside it is a woman, wearing a white kimono with her back turned on her. In front of the woman are pieces of paper, with Japanese writing on them. Then the woman turns, slowly. Suddenly, Haruo wakes up, and it's already morning. Mizuki is sleeping soundly beside him, and when she also wakes up, they celebrate the fact that they are still alive. The two make a trip with the reporter to Arki's childhood home. They ask his brother where lives the retired teacher, who told Arki the story originally. But it turns out that the teacher had also died from heart failure and ruptured eyeballs. It's revealed that the teacher studied old folk stories from the area, and had stumbled upon the story of Shilleri's son. His collection also included the story of the Blindfold Village, which had practiced inbreeding, to cultivate their lineage's power to place deadly curses on people. Eventually, the village produced a person with strong powers, capable of raising even the dead. Shortly after, the village was wiped out by a mysterious disease. Meanwhile, Shilleri's son comes after the concierge again, but this time, he is helpless against her. His mother hears his screams, and finds him dead with his eyeballs ruptured. Mizuki and Haruo mull over the information they discovered, they discuss that maybe the woman in the white kimono that Mizuki had seen, was the one responsible for starting the Shilleri's son curse, or maybe she was even Shilleri's son herself. 
Harwell also remarks that Schiller Yi's son is driven by the need for approval. She wants people to know her name, and explodes their eyes when they dare turn their eyes away from her. They also wonder why Arky survived after hearing Schiller Yi's son's story as a child. The two come to the conclusion that it was probably because Arky had forgotten about the story. The reporter's car breaks down just as they are leaving Arky's town. He is worried, since his wife knows Schiller Yi's son's name, and she might come after his wife. Haruo tries to comfort him, and says that since the three of them are in the same place, Schiller Yi's son will probably go after them, instead of his wife. Mizuki gets an idea that can possibly save them. She calculates that Schiller Yi's son appears to a random cursed person every three days. If they tell thousands of people about her, then eventually, Schiller Yi's son will only appear once in a person's lifetime. As a result, it would increase their survival chance. But Mizuki's conscience gets the better of her, so she cancels the idea. However, the reporter is driven to protect his wife. He pulls out his laptop, so he can upload his article online, attempting to spread the story about Schiller Yi's son. Haruo and the reporter get into a scuffle, as Haruo tries to take his laptop away from him. They accidentally knock Mizuki off a cliff edge, and she bashes her head on a huge rock. The reporter runs to a nearby forest and tries to contact his wife, but the cellular signal is spotty. Suddenly, Shiryu's son appears down the road. He is still on the phone with his wife, but he starts hearing his dead daughter's voice. The reporter realizes that he is ready to die and see his daughter again, so he turns around to check, instead of staring at Shiryu's son. Meanwhile, Haruo manages to get Mizuki to a hospital. When she regains consciousness, he is at her bedside. But Mizuki has lost her memory, and she does not recognize him anymore. She also does not have any idea about Shiller's son. Just like Arki, her lost memory means that she is no longer cursed, because she doesn't know Shiller's son anymore. Instead of telling her about everything they went through together, Haruo chooses to keep Mizuki safe, and just let her be. He lies, and tells her that he was just a random passerby who had saved her. Later, Haruo also visits the reporter's apartment and learns from a neighbor that after the reporter had died, his wife also disappeared shortly after. This leaves Haruo as the only cursed person left. He has the choice of either letting more people know about Shiller Yi's son, so the risk would be lessened, or he could also let the curse die with him. He walks home deep in thought and notices too late that Shiller Yi's son is behind him. The movie ends with Haruo and Shiller Yi's son looking into each other's eyes. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.